everyone welcome to the next session on operations research in this session we will take up a numerical on the topic of dual simplex method solve the following problem by dual simplex method minimize z which is 2x1 plus 2x2 plus 4x3 it is subject to constraints that are given three of them and then there is a non negativity constraint I will solve this problem step wise. So the first step will be to convert the given minimization problem to maximization one. So I'm converting minimization type of problem to maximization one so here this will now be maximize this is written as z so let me use the symbol g when i convert minimization to maximization this will be negative of the equation given so it will be minus 2x1 minus 2x2 minus 4x3 then i'll go for step two we need to observe that for maximization type of problem the constraint should be of less than equal to type the second and the third constraint are less than equal to type the first one is greater than equal to so i will have to convert the first constraint into less than equal to type by multiplying throughout by minus 1 so therefore the first equation becomes minus 2x1 minus 3x2 minus 5x3 will be less than equal to minus 2 i have multiplied with minus 1 on both the sides now comes step 3 where i am going to convert the problem which is of canonical type to the standard form for that the objective function is maximize g is equal to minus 2x1 minus 2x2 minus 4 x3 it is subject to constraints the first one is here Also, I'll have to change the less than equal to sign. So I first write the left hand side. It is minus two x one, minus three x two, minus five x three, and to the left, I am going to add something because this side is less. So I'll add a slack variable. It is equal to minus two. Then I'll go for the rest two constraints over here. It is three x one plus x two plus seven x three. It is again less than equal to so plus s two is equal to three. Third one is x one plus four x two plus six x three plus s three is equal to five. And lastly, I write down x one, x two, x three, s one, s two, s three. All are greater than equal to zero. So this is the last non-negativity constraint. Now step three. completes here then i am going to go for step 4 where i want to find the initial solution this is initial basic feasible solution so i am going to put x1 x2 and x3 as zero so these are the non basic variables So you can see here, I have going to substitute x1, x2, x3 as zero. For the first equation, I'll get s1 is minus two. Second equation gives s2 is three, and third equation gives s3 is equal to five. So I'll write down therefore s1 is minus two, s2 is three, and s3 is five. Now since s1 is less than zero, which means it is negative. 
what I find is solution is infeasible. So this is what I was telling you in the theory session that it is possible that your initial equation is infeasible. The dual may not be infeasible but the primal form is. So now I need to find the solution using dual simplex method. You cannot use a simple simplex method over here for solving this kind of problem. So I will start with the initial dual simplex table. The table remains same as that of simplex method. So it starts with CBI coefficient of basic variable, CJ, the basis. Here I'll write down all the variables that are present in the objective function that is over here. So I just did not add 0, S1 plus 0, S2 plus 0, S3. So add all three of them as well. Here this would be x1, x2, x3, s1, s2, s3. And here we are going to find the solution. Here I will write down the coefficient of each of these variables from the objective function. So this is minus 2, minus 2, minus 4, 0, 0, 0. Now here we will have these basic variables that is S1, S2, S3. The coefficient of each of them in the equation of G is 0. Then I will find out Zj and finally Cj minus Zj. Here I will write down the coefficients of the equation of the constraint. That will depend on the coefficient of the terms that I am writing. So let's write down this is minus 2, minus 3, minus 5. In the first equation we have S1, S2, S3 does not exist and the solution is minus 2 of S1. From the second equation this is 3, 1, 7, 0, 1, 0. This is 3 and the last one is 1, 4, 6. 0, 0, 1 and this is 5. Now for calculating Zj, I will be multiplying these values with this one and add each of them. So since these all are 0, these values will also turn out to be 0. Then I will calculate Cj minus Zj. So the first one is minus 2, then minus 2, minus 4, 0, 0, 0. Now how do we solve further? After this you will have to first figure out if any value in solution is negative, which it is. So I will catch hold of this value. This corresponding variable is now going to leave the solution that is S1 so that my solution slowly turns becoming feasible and optimal. So S1 is leaving the solution. Now after this you need to make another calculation which was not there in the initial simplex tables that you have used. Here this is Cj minus Zj divided by Aij. Now what are these elements that I am going to divide it with? It will depend on the key row. So Cj minus Zj is from here and this as you know is the key row. So I will be dividing each Cj minus Zj by its corresponding key row element. So this is minus 2 by 2 that is 1 minus 2 by 3 then this will be 4 by 5. This is 0 upon 1. So this is just 0 and 0. So you can ignore them. Now what is important is figuring out which is the minimum one. This is 0.8 and this is 0.66. So since this is minimum, I am going to use x2 as the entering variable. So x2 will enter the solution and S1 will leave the solution. So I'll write down over here, S1 is the leaving variable and X2 is the 
entering variable. So now let's make the next table that is step 5. This is iteration 1. Let's make the table again. Here instead of S1, I'll write down X2. This is S2 and S3. The coefficient of S2 and S3 is 0. Coefficient of X2 is minus 2 in the equation of G. Now we will start by first dividing the first row by minus 3. So this becomes 2 by 3, 1, 5 by 3, minus 1 by 3, 0, 0 and 2 by 3. As we know from simplex table, these two values will be 0, which is below the key element. So I'll directly write these two as 0. And then you have to calculate the other values as per the simplex table itself, which you have done before. So I'll just show you once again. Suppose if I have to find the element in this position. So this will be original element minus its corresponding key row element that is minus 2 into its corresponding key column element that is 1 and divided by the key element that is minus 3. This is my key element which comes at the intersection. So this will be 3 plus 2 by 3. So this is minus 3. So you have another minus sign over here. 3 minus 2 by 3. So this becomes 9 minus 2 by 3 that is 7 by 3. Similarly, you will have to calculate the other elements as well. So I'll write down this is 7 by 3, this is 16 by 3, 1 by 3, 1, 0, so 7 by 3. Here I get minus 5 by 3, minus 2 by 3, 4 by 3, 0, 1, and 7 by 3. Now I'll calculate Zj, that is multiplying this value with these numbers. Now these two are 0, so no point in multiplying for the second and the third row. Just multiply minus 2 with each of them and write the answer. So this becomes minus 4 by 3, minus 2, minus 10 by 3, 2 by 3, 0, 0 and minus 4 by 3. And then I'll calculate Cj minus Zj. So this value is minus 2 by 3, this is 0, minus 2 by 3, minus 2 by 3, 0 and 0. So you can see that your value of solution has now become positive, which means this is the optimal basic feasible solution. So I'll write down, since... All Cj minus Zj are also less than or equal to 0, which is necessary for maximization type of problem. And all values in the solution column are positive. The solution obtained is optimal therefore the final optimal solution is you can see that x1 has not entered the solution so x1 is 0 x2 has entered the solution and the value is 2 by 3 and x3 has also not entered the solution now we will calculate the value of g. So maximum g will now be minus 4 by 3. As you can see over here, this is the value that we are going to write down. Or if I have to write down the value of minimum z, as you know it is negative of this value. So it is 4 by 3. So these are the answers that you have obtained. So with this, I end the session. I hope you have understood the numerical. If you have any doubts, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you.